Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think I see the chat has been a bump already. Thank you so much. But if you're a newcomer and you're new here, well, um, you could definitely just type in where you're viewing this live stream from. And also maybe just let us know um, how is it there. It's been really hot for um, a couple of people. <laughs> so that's really interesting, isn't it? Um, let me just go ahead and see. We are live. Yes, we are live. Awesome. Um, I see Judy. Excited to be and learn from Fiona. Um, Benita's here. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Judy. Hi, Eileen. All right, awesome. <laughs> I think we could start. So welcome again. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kathleen. I am with Etcher Studio, and I'll be your host for today. And I am joined by the one of the amazing artists. Uh, resident artists from Etcher, sorry, who does these amazing breathtaking portraits, as you see here on the screen. She's no other than Fiona DePinto. <laughs> and <laughs> together we'll be doing a live feedback session. So for those who are new um, right here, what is a live feedback session, you ask? So we have had some students um, submit their, who took Fiona's classes, submit their artworks, and will be open for Fiona's feedback right here. Of course, we are um, going to be talking about Fiona's style, so that's going to be really exciting. And um, those who are actually, who have actually submitted their works are um, entered into a drawing at the end. So the only rule that we need to um, take note of is that you'll have to be present in the chat until the end. And you'll get a chance to win a $100 gift card from Ezra Lab. So isn't that amazing? I mean, I I'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I see some active um, people in the chat already. So before we begin, if you have any questions, just type them in all capital letters. We'll go ahead and um, ask that to Fiona if it's necessary to what she's talking about. Um, if not, we'll have a Q&A at the end and we'll go ahead and do the giveaway afterwards. So make sure, again, you're active in the chat. <laughs> and with that, I'll give the floor to Fiona and so that she could reintroduce herself and get us started. Yeah. So hi, everyone. And uh, I'm Fiona Pinto. And I'm a resident artist with Etcher. I have done quite a few master classes and other classes with Etcher. And um, yeah, you know my style, it's watercolor portraits and uh, expressive. So I'm not like, my style is not very photorealistic. It's more like uh, puddly and uh, loose and splattery. And uh, I'm Drawings in a Drawer on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on there yet, feel free to go ahead and do that. And you can tag me with your work on there as well. And uh, I think we can just, oh, something I wanted to say before we dive into this feedback session is, of course, we are going to give feedback according to what my personal style is. So anything that I say is completely my opinion. And of course, to me, every work of art is a personal creation and it's beautiful uh, just because of that. And it's so in interesting to me to see um, what other people see, uh, everyone's different points of view of the same subject. So um, anything I say to you, you can take with a pinch of salt and um, because of course, everything you've created is beautiful. And I'm just going to give you some advice according to what my style is. So we can begin if you want, Kathleen. There we go, all right. Okay, so we're starting off with expressive watercolor portraits. And this was the very first uh, workshop that I did. I think it was back in August 2021. And we have Alison and Cheryl's uh, beautiful pieces. And uh, again, though these are from the same subject, we can see how very different they are. Starting from the palette that was used, uh, Cheryl uses a much more muted, uh, kind of dusky, uh, dreamy palette. Whereas Alison uses a palette that is more vibrant and more bright and um, alive. Um, in um, Cheryl's work, I definitely see uh, something that is closer to my style um, because of how 
uh, dreamy and um, and also the facial expression of the character of this woman and the way that she's used light and shadow across the face. I really like the way the uh, she cast the the shadow coming from the nose. I think that is very natural. And she's left the eyes extremely soft as well as the lips. There is not too much contrast in this painting, so there are not any sharp shadows. And I absolutely love it. For me, it's like looking at a reflection in, uh, in water. It's very soft, very dreamy. I just love what Cheryl did with this. And bouncing over to Alison's one, in contrast, it is very bright, very um, pops out of the screen. And this is pro pro probably because Alison has a, her own style, her own different style. And as you can see, the lips are more uh, in focus and the eyes are more like direct in a way, like she's looking straight at you. Uh, if you look at Cheryl's one, the pupil is showing more. So we have that darkness at the top of the iris. Whereas in Alison's one, the eye is, the iris is almost all one color. And that kind of gives a more fierce, in a way, look to the to the portrait. So if that is something that Alison was trying to convey, that is absolutely uh, amazing because she definitely got that across. She seems like she's portraying a, a feeling of uh, power and uh, strength, uh, whereas Cheryl's one is more romantic. So I think that is what I have to say for now. Uh, also the backgrounds, if you look at them, how how uh, Alison used this blue so intensely and while uh, Cheryl's one is kind of, again, more muted and more dusky. We can go to the next slide. Okay, here we are. So Helen and Judy, I believe we have two pieces from Judy. Judy, again, has a very intense use of colour and uh, she is not afraid to dive right in and uh, put a focus on certain features. Like in this case, we have the lips that are really standing out a lot. And we have the nose is perfect and the hair and everything is done uh, uh, with a lot of saturated paint. Uh, saturated paint, when I talk about saturated paint, I mean that you are using uh, quite a lot of paint as opposed to water in your mixes, which I don't know if this is true or not, you can tell me later. Uh, and this is a, a um, style choice in a way. Uh, some people like to paint more with a more watery style. Some people like to have this more concentrated and that actually helps you build up the layers faster and uh, get to your final result uh, quicker. Um, one piece of advice I would give, is uh, depending where you want the focus to be. If you want the focus to be on the eyes, then I, maybe next time I would slightly tone down the lips. But if your uh, idea of focus was going to be in the lip area, then that's definitely something that you've achieved because we have those nice white teeth showing. We have those highlights on both the top and the lower lip. And the, the lip is quite large, so it really uh, pops in the, in the, in the portrait. Um, moving on to Helen's one, uh, I find this one really interesting because Helen clearly created her own sketch, so she didn't use the outline that I uh, offered in the list of materials, which is something that's really interesting and I really love to see. She has a very delicate, very, um, yeah, very delicate use of colour. You can see that she places it very carefully, very thin layers, and um, but at the same time, she's been very expressive about it because if you look at the cheeks, at the blush on the cheek, it's got two, two different shapes uh, and quite uh, um, clear shapes on, uh, on the two sides of her face. On the right side, as we see it on the screen, on the right side, we have like a larger blush. And on the other side, we have a smaller blush area which is something that I personally really like because I do that a lot. Personally, in my own portraits, I like to uh, add these mismatched um, um, things because sometimes we do 
happen to see those in real life as well. So I like that she's seeing, she's painting what she's seeing. She's not painting what she thinks that she should see, which is something that uh, a mistake that we very often do. And um, her shadows are quite defined. So we have these nice sharp shadows. And I like that the eyes and um, it's almost like the, the, she's looking, not everything is in balance, okay? So we have the nostrils, one is slightly lower down than the other one, and the eyes are also, one is placed uh, more to the outside uh, of the face, so they're not uh, symmetrical. And I think that that is absolutely beautiful. Uh, depend, obviously, if that is what Helen's uh, purpose was for this portrait. And that really shows that she's already developed her own style. Uh, if she wasn't looking to achieve this uh, effect, then maybe um, she can start with, uh, you know, create a sketch with a grid, for example, is a good idea to get the symmetry in there. But to be honest, I really love it as it is. And I think that it reminds me of um, certain more abstract art from uh, the early uh, 20th century and I really think it's unique and beautiful and I also love the blooms that she got in the background and she's got a really amazing water to paint ratio which means she's got a lot of control um, <clears throat> over this medium which is so hard watercolor uh, which means that she's quite uh, quite a bit ahead in the learning curve of this uh, of this technique of this medium. And we can move on to the next slide. Before we do so, um, Judy Summers um, mm -hmm. just wanted to comment that she has to use a slightly different rose matter than suggested, and it was a very strong pigmented color. I think that made a huge difference to her piece, don't you think? I totally think so, because uh, I use, uh, almost always use White Knight's Rose Madder Lake, uh, uh -huh. Madder Lake Red Light. Um, yeah. And I actually was um, testing it just yesterday because I was painting for a YouTube video. And I was testing them against the Madder Lake Red Light against other Madder Lake Red Lights from other brands. and. The one from White Knights dries so much lighter. So what Judy is saying is completely true. Uh, you, there are certain brands that are just more pigmented, so you literally get that darkness, that intensity of value much faster in the process. Whereas I have to layer mine over and over and over again to get you know that intensity. So yeah, I totally agree. Thank you so much. Yeah, she did say she used Mission Gold. Oh, okay, really interesting. Okay, I know that Magella Mission Gold is very pigmented, yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. All right, thank you so much. Let's move on to the next. Okay, so here we have Lillian and Viviane. And Lillian, um, yeah, again, we have a very soft use of colour. And uh, I really like what she did with the shadows and the expression, everything is very soft, very loose, uh, again, very dreamy. I love that splatter in the left uh, bottom corner uh, because it's kind of, you know, uh, out of the main portrait, outside of the main portrait, so it's kind of adding interest. Um, and uh, what I would have done here, I, I'm interested to know uh, later on what, uh, what paints and what paper Lillian used, because I am wondering if this paper is um, like 100% cotton paper, because I can kind of see the paint acting in a different way on it. So I would be interested in knowing that, but this is definitely a great exercise. And she, it seems like she took a lot of way away from the workshop and was definitely listening to what I was saying. I would add some more detail, slightly more detailed strands, maybe to the hair, to kind of make it uh, stand out, like um, not have the hair appear like a, a general mass, but just by adding a few strands to it. So that is something that she can do now, uh, even after the portrait is complete. She can add with a fine uh, detailed brush. She can go in with a concentrated mixture of, I can't remember what brown we were using for the hair, but it was probably some mid-tone brown. I'm sure that anything will do. 
you can go in with a concentrated a mixture of brown, so more paint, less water, and add some nice strands, uh, flyaway strands, even around the uh, near the neck or at the side, and that will really give it a more uh, a looser uh, mood, let's say. And going on to Vivian, Vivian's done an amazing job with this, and we have those strands that I was talking about. Uh, in Lillian's uh, portrait, or Lillian, I think it's Lillian, I'm not sure. Um, I love what she did with the background because she went very uh, daringly and bravely into using a lot of water, which is something that we tend to shy back from because using more water means less control. And I think we all know that uh, quite well by now. I love the blending that uh, she's used in this uh, portrait because just look at the blush on the cheeks and it's it's almost like, in a way, it's almost photoshopped looking. Of course, I know it's not, but it's so smooth, the blending around the, how the cheeks blend into the rest of the skin tone. I love the shadow under the, uh, the lip uh, going down under the neck. And the eyes are so soft and beautiful. The only piece of advice I have here, maybe I would slightly darken up the teeth because they appear to be very white. And usually we do have some shadow on the teeth. Now, if you do take this piece of advice, be very mindful not to go in and create any harsh shadows because that would distract from um, the portrait that would kind of make make the teeth become the focus of the portrait and that's not our intention uh, I would just go over like maybe put some ultramarine blue very watered down just to hint at a suggestion of shadow on the teeth and that's all I have to say because really she's done an amazing job great all right um if there are no more questions just uh we'll go ahead and go to the next slide all right Okay, this is Judy again, and I love how she's shown her process photos, and she's really done a good job with the underpainting technique because it's not easy at all to use this underpainting technique without letting allowing the green to overpower everything else. Um, because I have seen certain uh, examples of this live demo where basically the, the, the face turned out to be green. So that means that she has already mastered uh, the layering technique pretty well. Otherwise, we would have seen a lot more of that green in the final project, which we are not. Uh, we are just seeing it like uh, showing through kind of, um, uh, we can see it, it's there, like, as it should be in, in the background, kind of as an underlayer of the skin, which is what it's meant to be. And she's done that really well. I really love what she's come up with. It's a, She's used the white or left the white in the eyelashes, which I think is something that I did in my original painting and something I really like because it gives the idea of light bouncing off the eyelashes. I love those little heart shaped leaves. They're so beautiful and uh, along with the splatters really add so much movement to the portrait. And the only thing maybe I would have uh, made, added some more splatters also uh, near, near next to the poppies or on, to, uh, on top of the poppies because I'd like to see some movement in that area as well just to complement the whole loose feeling of this of this painting. But yeah, she's she's done an amazing job and she's definitely worked hard on uh, on mastering the the underpainting and making sure that everything's dry before a layer before adding the layers on top. OK, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, Judy said she actually had to lift a lot of the green. <laughs> that was okay. interesting. Well, anyway, but... if that, that's still good because it means that she yeah. knew to, she knew to do that. I mean, it, it's right that she was. In, in um, with watercolor, a lot of it comes down to be becoming aware of how water and paint behave on the paper. And the fact that she went in and lifted knew, means that she knew that was something that had to be done. Something I very often see in classes that I uh, host uh, like in real life here in Rome. Uh, so I am actually able to see 
the students while they're painting is that a lot of them don't realize that sometimes they're going in too strong and too uh, saturated too early on and I end up and they're basically using watercolor like acrylic or um, like uh, oils where uh, you don't need to go in so with such thin layers and do as much lifting because you can always go back in with lighter colors on top of the darker ones. Here we can't really do that with watercolor. So it was uh, good that she did that. Yeah, I had to agree. It's it's really a skill. And um I, I was actually saying or complimenting her, how do you how does she actually perfect that without destroying the piece? Because usually that's also another skill, I guess. Yeah, one one thing that I always say is uh, when you're using kitchen paper, which is like the, my preferred way to lift, you can also use a, a dry or thirsty brush, which means a clean, damp, fairly damp brush to lift. That's more suitable for smaller areas, but for larger areas, I would use kitchen paper all the time. And what I always say is press down firmly and lift. Something you do not want to do is drag that kitchen paper across your painting because that is going to pull the paint across the paper and especially if we're using cold press paper then it's going to leave a mark there. So we can move on to the next slide. Right, awesome. Okay, I love the fact that this is on a double stretch, Carolina, uh, and uh, on a double on a double spread in a sketchbook because that is exactly what I originally did when I painted this uh, portrait. It was on uh, actually an etcher sketchbook, uh, and um, I really like it. I like the the fact that she added in the writing at the side because I think it's very important. Something that I do. Uh, that I forget to do very often myself is to add what was it basically what were we doing and sometimes also what colors we were using because I sometimes go go back and decide to teach a class on something and I cannot remember what colors I used or how I did it so it's really good taking notes this is just a side note here but taking notes of what we did for certain paintings especially when they turn out the the way we like them uh the, when when they're they're satisfactory to us, then we having notes is a good idea. I love her leaves. I see that she went in and kind of strayed a little bit from what I was doing, which I love because it's her, her own interpretation. And uh, the little uh, poppies here to the left, that, that looks like Madder Lake red light. I wonder if she was using the same Madder Lake red light as I was. And she's kept everything very soft. There's um, the hair and the face are almost like the same color and there is um, uh, it's almost actually as if the focal point I'm moving between the lips and the flowers and the leaves like my eyes are bouncing back between these two so there's almost like there's no real you know like one focus point in the painting she's bringing her eyes across the, the two pages of the sketchbook, which, which I absolutely love. And I love how muted everything is and how soft she's kept everything. And I, did, I think she did an amazing job with this. Yeah, um, and Car uh, Carol's actually with us and she's saying she had a great time doing this one. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Great, awesome. Okay, this is Erica. And this was my added elements uh, class. And uh, that class was one, one of them, not, not my most recent one. I think I had a couple of classes, master classes after that. And I think that was my first recorded one, if I'm not mistaken. And in my original one, I, I had a fish swimming across the, um, the neck or something, or the side uh, of the head. And I love how she kind of uh, uh, has her own interpretation here, where basically she's, uh, it almost looks like she's painting a mermaid or someone underwater, because we do have these uh, that seaweed in the background. So that's her added element and also this nice vegetation right at the front. And I like how the portrait blends into that nicely. It's nice that she also added her process photos. That is something that I always really appreciate because it allows me to see how she built up the layers. And uh, I really love, sometimes something that happens to me is uh, I'm undecided when to stop. Uh, 
And I, for example, I can tell you, I already love the first step uh, of her painting after the sketch. It was very, uh, so soft and so uh, well blended. And even when she went ahead onto the next step, we still have that, we still have that softness. We still have that polished look to this piece. The only thing I would uh, watch, uh, be careful with is the eyebrows, because sometimes the eyebrows if we don't go in lightly enough, can be distracting from the general, can take away from the softness of the portrait. And uh, be careful to, uh, they always say eyebrows are not twins, they are sisters, so they're not the same. But uh, in this case, the eyebrow to the left side of the portrait is going slightly down on the outer edge, which kind of uh, draws my, my attention to that area. Uh, so I would either have them kind of both have have them go downwards at the outer edges or I would have them be more like the, um, the other one, which is more straight. And I would I would possibly use a more diluted paint for them because everything else is so soft and so polished that, uh, yeah, my eyes are kind of drawn, drawn to the eyebrows. Uh, but if that happens, um, you can either go in and add more contrast to the piece, like adding shadows like under the chin, adding some redness to the cheeks, or even adding, uh, if you add a, a darker ring around the iris, maybe with some indigo and across the top of the iris, that will balance the gaze area out more. But this said, it's a beautiful painting. You've done a wonderful job with it. And uh Again, and I also see that you've gone in and uh, addressed the clavicles. Is that what they're called? The breastbones, I think they're called. Um, yeah. I'm getting the Italian word for it, which is clav clavicles. I'm not sure if that's what it's called. But anyway, I, yeah, I think that's the scientific term for it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it, it is. Yeah, it comes from, it probably comes from Latin. That's why. It's, <laughs> um, so I and she's done that well because it's not easy to hint at the breastbone at all and she's that done that very gently very softly so you still see it's there but you're they're not distracting me at all from the rest of the face from the rest of the painting so kudos to you for that okay this is Elena and I remember seeing this one on the face uh, group, the Etcher Facebook group, uh, because I, I really clearly remember the ladybug. So unless it was somebody else who placed the ladybug on the head, then it must have been her. And I think she, I was uh, delighted with that because she went ahead and did something um, that I, I think I'd done that in uh, the live demo. I think I'd done that either in the live demo or in the mini workshop. I I, I think I'd painted a, a ladybug or ladybird, depending on where you're from. And so I like that she has this her own interpretation in there. And she just kind of put a bit of, um, she has the poppies, which were from uh, uh, another class, I think. And then she has the, 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 the leaves in the background with a lot of splatters. And then she placed the ladybug on the head. And I think this portrait is so, so much fun because in spite of the intensity of the face, she's kind of added that pop of good cheer onto the head by placing that very large ladybug on there. And I absolutely love this. I also love that she has that sticky out ear because ears are a very interesting ele well, element. You know, very often we, we, we paint them flat uh, along the sides of the head because they're quite hard to tackle. But I like that she was daring and kept that ear, you know, showing, sticking out and did a really good job because it's hard to paint ears. That's why I myself, I'm sometimes guilty of not including them in portraits because um, they are, they, there's so many capillaries in them and then the light can shine through ears from the back and they're, 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 there's like cooler tones with inside the ears. There's sharp shadow where the ear cartilage bends over. So they're not easy to tackle at all. I love, love, love that she put that in there. Uh, and again, I am surprised by the fact that most of you are coming up with these really polished uh, paintings with the, the the blending and the transition of color is absolutely amazing 
and um, I even love the hair. It's like the, the right balance of uh, detail to the hair without distracting from, uh, from other things, let's say. Uh, I think it's a, this is a very balanced portrait, even the way she's positioned all the elements, like we have these three elements around her, one flowers in the neck, the ladybug on the head, and then these, um, these uh, petals, no, not petals, leaves, I don't know, they look like rose leaves, I'm not sure. Over here, it kind of allows the eye to travel across the whole portrait rather than to stop in one area. So we don't have one specific focus area on here, but we're actually moving kind of uh, all over the portrait. So that is a really good strategy and I really like this work. Awesome, congratulations, Elena, for that. And this is Janna or Yanna, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. That sounds uh, like uh, I was saying earlier to like maybe a Dutch surname. I'm not sure if it, Yanna or Janna, sorry. Um, you can let me know later what it is. And this is more similar to what I did in the added elements uh, portrait. Uh, she had, uh, I'm not sure if I had two or one fish in mind. I can't remember. And she did a really good job. I really love the intensity of her gaze. So in this portrait, we have the eyes. The eyes are the focus of this portrait. That is definitely the place where my, my own eyes are drawn to first so uh, that that is a good idea because either we do what Elena did earlier and we have um we don't have one area of focus but when we don't have one area of focus the uh, the, um, it, the other the several areas of focus have to be placed strategically you can't just like dump them in the middle of the face like three objects or three elements just randomly there's actually a law of composition about that and I talked about that in my class I believe I can't remember in which part of that cycle it was but where you should be positioning these elements you just don't randomly pop them in certain areas um, and so the focus here I was saying are the eyes and the eyes are very intense, very piercing. I definitely see that she took my advice to paint the top of the iris uh, darker. So we really have those highlights popping in the eye. I really love her use of shadow around the eye. And I love the fact that she left the rim, the lower rim of the eye showing. And it's something that I very, I very often don't see and I very often don't do myself because I have it in the sketch and then I lose it while I'm painting it and I can't get it back. So uh, what I'm talking about is if you look at the eye on the left side, you can clearly see that the eyelashes, the lower eyelashes are sprouting from the rim of the eye, which is as it should be. Very often we see paintings where they're coming from the eye, almost looks like they're coming from the eyeball, which obviously is not uh, anatomically possible. So I really li like that she had that in there, that she left that in there. There is a slight um, imbalance between the two eyes. One is slightly smaller, but I think that I, that also suggests that the, the um, uh, subject is kind of turned slightly to the side. So that's fine because if we turn one eye will appear smaller than the other. And of course, needless to say, I love the fish and they act as a frame around the face. So good job to Jana or Yana. You did an amazing job. Yeah, let us know how you pronounce your name. Um, that would be super helpful too. Yeah, because I'm sure like certain countries in Europe would be Yana. Ja uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe in America would be Janna, I'm not sure. So here we have Anna. Well, I'm, I'm going to talk about Anna and Bonnie first. And Anna and Bonnie have been on quite a few of my master classes. So I've become quite uh, acquainted with them and with their work. And they are truly amazing artists. And I'm tackling their works first because they're clearly taken from the same master class. And the um, now you can look, both of them did such an amazing job, but at the same time, you can see how every artist views a subject differently. So starting with Bonnie, with Bonnie, we have a lot of contrast. Bonnie actually went in and added something that was in the reference image and that I don't believe I tackled in that portrait because I didn't have enough time, but the dappled shadows on the forehead suggesting that there probably was some like foliage or leaves in front of the subject. And that is not an easy task to do that without the without the shadows becoming distracting. But she did it in such a delicate manner 
uh, that they do not take away the focus, which in this painting, I believe, are the eyes. Uh, one eye, which is more exposed to the light, the one on the left hand side of the screen is lighter because I think there was like literally light shining into the eyes. And the other one is slightly darker. We, can, we have a little bit more blue in it, could be ultramarine blue, I'm not sure. But she did an amazing work and I love, love, love what she did with the background. She's a very talented and uh, skilled artist and uh, very passionate about her work. And you can tell that by just looking at everything that she does. And moving on to Anna, Anna as well has done an amazing job. She's added more intensity around the, the eye area. So we have more shadows around the eyes compared to Bonnie's work. And in, indeed, she has not uh, added the um, dappled shadows on the forehead. So I think she did well to intensify the gaze uh, because it, it's really we're drawn to the to the eyes. And at the same time, I'm also drawn uh, not as a main focus, but like, let's say as a secondary focus to the beautiful lips, the colour of the, those lips uh, uh, is so natural, uh, which is so something that I always like to say. I like painting lips dark, but I don't want uh, the character, the, the subject to look like they're wearing lipstick. I don't want it to look too artificial. And she's totally uh, done that perfectly here because it almost looks like she's been eating cherries or something like that. And I also love the shine on the nose and the splatters. This is a lovely, well-balanced piece and she did a really good job with it. And going to Bonita's one, I'm, I'm thinking it's Bonita that is pronounced. And Bonita is, um, um, I'm not sure, uh, Bonita said in the, on the Facebook group that she was inspired by uh, my classes. And I'm seeing in this piece, uh, something that is going more uh, towards like almost photorealism. Uh, the hair is, I don't know how long she must have spent on the hair because it is so detailed and there must be so many layers. If you look at the area close to the ear, just above the ear and below the temple, it's very dark. And then we have a buildup of layers. So she must have started obviously working light to dark. We have some redness in the hair. The hair is totally amazing. My eyes keep going, keep uh, getting drawn to the hair because it's literally like something out of a photograph. So I think what you're doing here, Bonita, is you're going towards a more realistic style compared to the one I use, which is more like loose and expressive which means you have to have a lot of skills and uh, spend a lot of time on your portraits. Personally, I um, sometimes feel like I spend too long on my work because I kind of tend to lose the connection with it if I stay on it for like more than two days. And I think, I believe you said you stayed on it for three days. And I think this is amazing. Uh, I'm not sure uh, whether you wanted me to give you some advice in case you wanted to, you, you, you weren't considering this piece quite finished if that is the case considering that there's so much focus on the eye naturally I'm looking at the, the painting and I'm going towards the eye but then as immediately my my eyes go towards the hair because it's so uh perfect so real looking that I'm like wow is that real is that a photograph so if you want if, if that is your intention I I wouldn't touch this anymore and I would leave it as it is. If you want to take the attention slightly away from the hair and move it back into the face, one thing you should do, but I should kind of need to see the reference image you used for this, would be to add quite a sharp shadow, possibly to the right side of the face. Right side, I mean right side on the screen. And by doing that, kind of like the shadow we see Bonnie has and Anna also have close to the eye, under the eye. If you look at this, if you find this reference picture, um, you can see uh, what I mean. And if you add that intense shadow, uh, like sharp shadow close to the eye, then you will draw the attention away from the face, from the hair and back into the face. Or at the very least, you'll have this balance because right now I'm really looking at that amazing hair, which is 
I'm clapping my hands because I really don't know if I could do that honestly and the patience and level of concentration and skill it must have taken and I also really love that earring uh, because it's just this nice little added element that it's not completely showing I, I love the fact we can only see part of it so well what can I say it's an amazing piece and uh, obviously I'm sure you know that yourself it's really a gorgeous gorgeous piece Thank you so much. Benita does agree. And she also has one suggestion for herself that she noticed. Um, I just now see I forgot to add a shiny white light in her eye with gouache. That might help bring more focus yeah. to the eyes. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Because eyes are so often the focus of portraits. So if you add a highlight in the eye, that would definitely make it like pop more. And you can definitely do that because you've got, got quite a lot of darkness at the top of the iris. So placing it in the top of the iris, so in the darker part, not in the lighter part, will make it show much more. And another thing I sometimes do is I will add um, a white eyelash somewhere because sometimes, um, the light bounces off our eyelashes unevenly and you can have like a, a one or two eyelashes that are more kind of um, that are catching the light more and that also helps to bring the focus uh, you know need closer to the eyes if you don't want the focus to be the hair because as I say I keep on looking at the hair my eyes keep on looking falling down towards the hair saying my god that that hair is amazing Hey, awesome, awesome. All right, let's go ahead. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is Cheryl again, and I I put these two to group these two together because they both have a black uh, background, and I see that Cheryl's already developing her own style. I don't know if I said that earlier, but I can tell because I'm beginning to kind of recognize her work. Um, I'm not sure which one of these two she did first. I am uh, really loving. Okay, if I have to compare the two, I have to say I'm loving the background in the one on the right hand side. She's done a really amazing job with it. It's kind of, um, um, it reminds me of those, you know, that, that kind of 70s style, that 70s illustration style you sometimes saw in fairy tale books. Uh, it yeah. really brings me back to that. Uh, whereas on the other, in the other portrait, she didn't really do uh, go as strong in the background as she did with the other one, but just look at that gaze. And the shine on the nose is kind of, my eyes are traveling from the eye, down to the tip of the nose, down to the lip. It is so beautifully delicate. Again, yeah, no, I remember now going back to that first painting uh, that she did for the workshop. I can see that again here. She has such, a dusky muted use of color which is something that personally I absolutely love and I just think that this painting is so beautiful so soft and the placing of the highlights not only inside the eye but also slightly under the eye almost on the just uh, below the lower rim of the eye the the the, the way she used as I suggested in the master class the blue on the inside of uh, between the bridge of the nose and the eye and the green on uh, let's say the area re leading up to the eyebrow and the temple is just she's really uh, worked on thin layers and that is absolutely what we do with watercolor and she's done a, a great job with this with the other one she's been a bit more intense so I, I would be really be interested in hearing from Cheryl if which one was done earlier so if the softer uh, paint uh, layering technique is a progression in her style or if it's something that she's actually moving away from to move more towards uh, more let let's say intense uh, layers and more bright and brighter colors or if she was using a different brand of watercolor i just see one's much brighter than the other and i see the one to the left side is more the, uh, similar to the style she was using in the previous one. And I'm wondering which one it is because these two styles seem to be quite different to me. Uh, so I'm, I was really wondering chronologically which one came uh, earlier, but maybe she can reply to that in the chat later on. Yeah, Cheryl, Great work. with us. Great work, anyway. <laughs> 
Great. Uh, Cheryl, if you're with us, um, please let us know which work came before or after. That would be really helpful. Okay, next would be... I think that, and this is Patty for our deep skin tones. So this one wasn't an easy class because we had not only the building of the deep skin tone, which takes longer to build, but we also had the drips and we also had the cluster of flowers. I remember somebody saying, I think it was in the Facebook group, that they were afraid to go in and add the cluster of flowers because, you know, they didn't want to ruin the painting. Uh, I love what she did with this. She really did a good job in building up that deep skin tone. I love how she added the blue and the gold on the eyelid. It's really, uh, and also I think in the in the lower lip, I think I did believe I did use metallic paints. And also look at the outline of that hair. She didn't just draw one mass of color, of hair, just, you know, like one uniform mass. We, have, we actually have all those uh, kind of ring, not ringlets of hair, but like in little loose tendrils of hair popping out all around the crown of her head. And that brings a note of realism to this uh, to this painting and um, and of looseness as well. I love the expression. I love the placing of the shadows. Maybe it would have gone slightly softer on the shadow on the right hand side of the face. Something you can do uh, when you get a sharp shadow. I think I was struggling with that in the master class as well, because she did have the reference image. It did have a really sharp shadow. Is to go in with a clean, damp brush and just gently wipe it across the shadow so that um, we don't have that stark line there. But apart from that, the flowers, the drips, the skin tone, the hair, the decorations in her hair, everything is just gorgeous and you did a really good job with this. Proud of you. I'm sorry, I was muted. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't realize that. All right, let's see. Did any of the artists use ink in their watercolor paintings? Um, please let us know, those who have submitted their works. That will be really interesting to know. And great job for this one, Patty. Okay, and I yeah. think that would be the last. Awesome. Okay, now that we're done, we could wrap things up. And if you guys have questions, um, please uh, let us know or drop them in the chat. Um, let's see. Aw, you, if you've missed the beginning or the first part of these live feedback session, after we end the broadcast, we definitely, you definitely can just um, refresh the same link and you can rewatch it. Okay, yes to ink, um, Patty says, awesome. All right, that would be super amazing though. It's, it's really cool how you guys use or incorporate different medium. Yeah. Okay, cool, and have to watch replay. <laughs> awesome. All right, if you guys have questions, just stop them in a chat and why, while, I'm sorry, <laughs> while I do that, I'm gonna be dropping the link to Fiona's upcoming class this July 29th, that's 12 p.m. Eastern time. That will be streamed live on YouTube. So I'm dropping the link right here. Make sure to check out the link. And if you cannot make it because of time zone concerns, that's totally fine. I'm gonna be dropping the link to the class recording where it will be posted after. All right. And let's see, I don't have, or I don't see any questions so far, but I did reserve some questions earlier. Um, Lillian, if you're here again, please let us know what paint and paper you used um, for, and Jana says it's a J as in jam. So thank you so okay. much for that. <laughs> All right. Um, how much water to use in the initial washes so that you do not have to lift out so much color later, asked by Judy. <laughs> well, uh, I always actually start off with quite a puddly wash because that helps me to remain expressive and loose. Um, but obviously, uh, keep that, um, keep that um, kitchen paper <laughs> close to you because uh, you, you you might need to use it in the beginning and I do start what I do is I start watery and uh, as I build up layers I use less and less water until I reach the final details which usually are the pupils and the eyelashes and I hardly have any water there at all in the end so we start from 
a very watery mixture, or at least I do, and we build up. And as we move further on into the top layers, we use less and less water. So I would say in the beginning, it's kind of like 70% water and 30% paint, something like that. Wow, that's so... Um, and it's good uh, to use a you, you big thirsty brush for that because it helps you pick up a lot of paint. If you're using a, a synthetic brush, uh, it's better to use like uh, an imitation um, natural bristles brush. So um, it's easier to pick up a, a lot of paint with that. Otherwise, you'll be struggling to pick up all this watery paint on your brush. You're muted, I think. Oh, I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep talking. Oh, my gosh. Um, thank you so much. And Judy says it is helpful. Um, and if you guys have more questions, just feel free to type them in a the chat. Or if you're too shy to ask them, I'm going to be flashing Fiona's um, Instagram handle so that you guys could um, pretty much pop in your question. And Fiona is very responsive. Oh, yeah. I can assure you that. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and drop the link as well again for Fiona's upcoming class. So make sure I'm, to. I'm showing what we're going to be doing. Oh, I will be flashing you. There you go. So this is actually, oh gosh, this is actually a painting of, I don't know where to move it, Camille Claudel, who oh. was a, a French sculptor. And she was a lover of more renowned French sculptor Rodin. But of course, as you can imagine, she didn't get the credit that she deserved for it. I'm just focusing that well. But anyway, she uh, was an amazing woman. And I'm going to tell a little bit about her life when we have the class. So if you can't be there on the 29th, it's going to be free when it's live. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll try to replicate this as, as similarly as we possibly can in a couple of hours. So we kind of have a time limit there. Um, but yeah, I I absolutely love that painting and I love, it's a sad story, but you know, I like to bring, um, to pay tribute to those amazing women who paved the way for the women of today. So that is my inspirational series, which I am uh, doing and I'm really happy to be doing with Etcher at the moment. And we've got more planned. So you've got to paint them all so you can have a collection of all the inspirational women that, um, yeah, did brave things long before uh, we even <laughs> thought about doing them today. I don't know. <laughs> it was definitely yeah. harder back in the days to do certain things. Exactly. And I, I, I love that you, how you spoke about it. You speak with so much passion in it. And I guess that pretty much would transcend through your class um, this coming 29th. So make sure you check that out. The link again in the chat, I'll be posting it um, for those um who has lost the uh, link for some reason. And I hope the participants who have submitted their works are still with us because we're going to be doing a giveaway. And again, for you to be able to win, there's only one rule. You'll have to be active here in the chat. So please type llama for the participants who have submitted their works today. Um, I want to see your well names. <laughs> and I'm going to be sharing my screen again so that we could all have some giveaway goodies right here. Are you excited? <laughs> I would be. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I would be too Um, if I was in their place. Cool, cool, cool. Llama, I see some llama. Awesome. All right. There you go. Okay, do you think we should spin the wheel, um, Fiona? <laughs> yeah, let's spin it. Great, great, great. Um, I see some llamas already in the chat, so that's pretty great. Um, let's go ahead and spin the wheel. If the person isn't here, then we'll have to spin again so we could pick a winner. So, great. I hope they're here. Yeah. <laughs> it's Anna. It is. Awesome. Awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> hey Anna, um, if you're here, um, let me know if you're here. I think she is. Anna Anna Duffy is um has been posting earlier, so that's cool. Yay! Congratulations, Anna. Let me just go ahead and flash on the screen what you will be needing to do 
So just to make sure to email customer, uh, I'm sorry, customer support <laughs> at hello at etrastudio.com. I'll also be typing that in the chat so you won't miss it. Um, and congratulations again. You won a $100 gift card from Etrolab. And I don't know, the endless, the possibilities are endless with that. Like, ah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Great, great, great. So I'm going to be flashing that till the end. Congratulations again, Anna. And um, with that said, we well, I'm also um, waiting for Anna to get all the, those details. Um, it's in the chat. We also have an open art studio coming up. That's July 10th. That's actually, oh, July 10th, 12 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure to join us there. And that's pretty exciting. If you wish to share your thoughts about what you've learned through Fairness class, that would be pretty amazing. So there's that. And lastly, again, Fiona's 90 minute class that's on July 29th. I'm flashing that on the screen. Great. Awesome. So any final thoughts, Fiona, before we close this feedback session? No, I just want to say I'm always very impressed with what I with what they come up with in uh, in uh, after the classes, you know, what they what, what the work that I see on Facebook and whenever they post something, some there's some really amazing work so I'm always impressed and super proud of them great, great. and I think you will be um extra proud once they have joined your class um, upcoming classes Fiona has got a lot in store for you so exactly you'd yeah. be surprised <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome thank you so much everybody and thank you so much Fiona again for that amazing thank feedback you. session and until next time everybody Make more art. Bye, Bye for now.